Today we're going to be checking out this HP Victus 15L, which apparently has a GPU problem. We're going to troubleshoot that, see if we can fix it. If we can't, we're going to replace it. And while we're inside, we're going to go ahead and check out what else is in there and see what other upgrades we can come up with. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out this HP Victus 15L. And this one came to me with a apparently a broken GPU of some sort. Uh, Windows is giving an error. The guy said he didn't know if it was a driver issue or a hardware issue. So we're going to be checking that out. So I think the steps we're going to take is we're going to boot this thing up and see what Windows is telling us about this GPU. And then we can uh, open it up and check out the hardware just to make sure it's all plugged in right and everything looks good. And then we're going to have to go from there. I think uh, the next step, logically after that, we might just go ahead and blow out Windows, completely do a reinstall of Windows 11, and see if we can pick up all new drivers for the, the card. And if that doesn't work, we'll just replace it. And uh, like I said, while we're inside there, we're going to check out what other upgrades we can do. So let's get this thing hooked up to a mouse and keyboard, and let's see what's inside. All right, so I went ahead and installed Windows 11 on here, fresh. Brand new. I used uh, my little thumb drive here. I've got a video that shows you how to create one of these, and then a video also that shows you how to install Windows 11 fresh. So that's all on there. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And now that we got Windows running, let's go ahead and go into the specs and see what we're starting with with this HP Victus 15L. So looking at the hardware here, we've got the CPU it is a Ryzen 5 5600G which is a great 6-core, 12-thread processor. It's got built-in graphics, though we don't need it, since we do have a graphics card with this. This one has 8 gigs of memory, and it looks like we got two slots there, so once we open it up, we should find an open slot, and then figure out if we want to upgrade that to 16, perhaps. As far as storage goes, we get a, looks like, 500 gigabyte SSD. Of course, we get Wi-Fi, AC, and then we get the built-in AMD Radeon graphics, and then we've got an actual card in there, a GPU card, that's the RX 6400. And not a super strong card, but it is a 4 gig card, and it will play, you know, most games at lower settings. But as far as I can see here, everything looks like it's working great. So let's go ahead and go into Device Manager, see if there's any problems in there. And it looks like everything's good to go. If we look under Display Adapters, we do see both the 6400 and the built-in integrated Radeon graphics. So everything looks like it's working as it should be. So it looks like there may have just been a problem with the drivers, perhaps, or something junked up in Windows. Who knows? But just reinstalling Windows happened to fix it in this case. But I do want to run some benchmarks real quick just to make sure that the graphics card does look like it's running. So let me set that up, and I'll be right back. All right, so I just launched User Benchmark, and I know it's not the best benchmark in the world, but I just basically want to see if all the hardware seems to be working right. And for that, this benchmark is just perfect. So let's go ahead and let this run, and I'll be back for the results. All right, so looking at these results here, we see that the CPU is running great, and that's expected. That's a great CPU. And we're looking at the RX 6400 here. It says performing below potential. Now, this uh, little section right here is probably all the 6400s, and it's kind of on the lower side. I don't think there's something wrong with it. I think it's just, you know, that's just a OEM version of a graphics card, and it's probably just slow we see it's in the 32 percent and that's compared up against a 26 super so an rtx 26 super so this is nowhere near that so i'm not too concerned about this 32.9 i'm not sure what happened with the uh, ssd it says sequential test incomplete not sure what happened there and then the ram says it's a little low maybe the xmp isn't enabled in the bios i'll take a look at that later but overall the benchmark worked and everything ran on it. And that's basically what I was trying to do with this. I wasn't trying to max anything out or get the best performance out of it. I just wanted to make sure all the hardware was looking good. So let's go ahead and take this thing and shut it down. And let's take a look in the inside and see how everything looks at, like in there. And look to see if we want to do some upgrades maybe to the hardware inside. All right, so this thing's really easy to get into. It's just got one screw on the side here and the door comes off. Now HP does love using their T15 Torx. Uh, screws everywhere, so make sure you have one of those if you're going to do this. It looks like they'll also use a slotted, but it'd be a lot easier with the Torx 15 if you have one. 
So the first thing that jumps out at me when I open this thing up is this power supply is not a full size power supply. So if we look at the back here, I didn't see this before. We can see the width of this thing is not a full width power supply. So it, I don't think you could even get one in there. The opening doesn't look big enough. So this is just a 350 watt power supply. So that's going to limit what you can get out of this thing. And specifically, probably the GPU. That's why they're using one of these one slot GPUs here. That requires no additional power. There is no additional power coming off of here, off of this power supply for a GPU. So you'd have to replace it. And you can't really replace it, I don't think, without cutting into the side of that thing. So it looks like uh, graphics power wise, this is probably going to be one of the better ones. It is a pretty modern card. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave that in there. Now, as far as the other components, of course, you get the CPU and there's nothing wrong with that CPU. That 5600G is, is great. So we'll leave that alone. Now, next up, we've got our SSD in here. So if you see this guy right here that I'm pointing at, that's the SSD and that's an NVMe drive. And you could certainly upgrade that. There's just one little screw right on the right there. You take that screw out, you can pop out that drive, pop in a new one, and then you can use the same method that I use to reinstall Windows to reinstall it on there and everything will work just great. So you could go with a one terabyte or two terabyte drive and give you some more room for games. But I think in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that 500 gig in there. And then last up, we've got our RAM. So looking in here behind the drive cage, you can see there is two slots. And there's one stick of 8 gigs of RAM in there. So a very easy and cheap upgrade will be 16 gigs. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to grab that RAM in just a second. But I wanted to show you the rest of the inside here. We've got a drive cage right here that is already got a cable sitting right here waiting for it. If you wanted to add a three and a half inch SATA drive, it's already got a SATA cable there. It's already plugged into the motherboard. So you can just mount that drive right in here. And you know, you can get like a two terabyte drive for 55 bucks or so. And that'll give you lots of room for games. So if you wanted to just leave that 500 gig in here for Windows and then add a two terabyte drive in here for all your games and stuff, then that would be completely fine. So let me go ahead and take this uh, drive bay off here so I can get at the RAM. And I'm going to go grab a uh, probably a 16 gig 2 two by 8 stick set of RAM. And we'll go ahead and get that installed in there. All right, so I got everything taken apart and I kind of laid it back here so I could show you how it all comes apart. So the first thing you want to do is just take these clips. There's like three plastic clips right across here to take that faceplate off. And that faceplate is connected by a cable. So just go ahead and just leave that laying down here flat next to your computer. That way you don't hurt that cable. Next, there was a little screw here that was sitting right in here. Once you take that up, then this will go ahead and just hinge up and out. And there was just a little clip. One of these little clips was kind of stuck into the front here. But once you just pop that up and this comes out, you just get it up at 90 degrees and then it comes out. And then the same thing with this. There is a screw about right here, right from the front. So that's why you have to take this front cover off. And you take that screw out, same type of screw out of here. And then that allows this to come up. Now, before you lift this up, go ahead and take these cables that were stuck into this little cable keeper and just pop them out of that cable keeper. Then you just lift this straight up and it comes out. So now we got all nice and open here. We can go ahead and get into that RAM. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that old RAM out. And if we look past all these cables here, you see just the white little clips on either side of the RAM. And we're just going to take those two clips there and we're going to separate them outward. So just one on the left, one on the right. And then once you separate those out, it actually pushes this RAM straight up and you can pull it straight up and out of the way. Now, if you look on your RAM, there is a little notch here and the notch is not centered. So when you look at the new RAM and put it in, make sure that you're lining up the notch with the notch that's in the slot. So you can see about right there, there's a notch and it's more to the right than it is to the left. So you're going to make sure that you line this up on the new RAM and pop it back down. So as far as the new RAM goes, I've got this little kit here of T-Force Vulcan Z, and this is 2x8. This is DDR4, uh, 3200 megahertz. So we're going to pop that in there. I'll leave some links down in the description below of some compatible RAM, whatever the, the cheapest kit 
or the best deal kit is at Amazon right now. So go ahead and check those links down below. And if we look again, this does have the same notch here and it is off centered a little bit. So we're going to pick one of these two RAM slots and we're just going to press it straight down in there. While I've got everything open, I'm just going to go ahead and open all the white clips here. So you want all of those spread out so that we can get the new RAM in. So I'm going to go ahead and do this top slot first. So line up the slot. And it's just going to fit right in a little channel inside here. And then I just get it kind of sitting in there and make sure that it's in both the channels. So there's a channel on both sides that's going to do this. So you're going to just get that RAM in both channels. And now on both sides here, I'm going to push down with my left, down with my right. So it's going to go click, click. And I'm just going to push straight down. And when you do that, these little white clips should go ahead and fold in. So that's locking that RAM in there. So I'm going to take the second stick and do the same thing. Make sure you get the notch lined up. Another way, once you get one in there, you can kind of look at the, the name of the RAM and make sure it's going the same way. That's just a, a quick little visual way of seeing that you're putting it in the right way. So then you just get this lined up in those channels again, get it all lined up. And now I'm just going to push, push again. And now it's all locked in there. So now that you get your RAM in there, you can go ahead and you could probably hook up all your cables now and boot this thing up and make sure that it sees it uh, before you put all the rest of the cages back on. But really, it's not that hard to get these cages back on. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these on and uh, get it all back together. But if you're not 100% sure that you did get this, you know, pushed in the right way, then that's just a little trick to go ahead and hook up your cables and boot the thing up. That way you don't have to take everything apart if you have to come back in here and just push them down and get them fully seated. So let me get this all put back together and we'll boot it back up. All right, so I got it all put back together now and closed up. And I did want to show you, I've got a couple of these uh, HP Victus 15Ls and they're all different. They, they make just tons of different models. Uh, some are Intel, some are HP, some are black, some are white. And uh, it drives me crazy that they call them 15L when they're all different. Now there is a sub series after the 15L that tells you more. So make sure if you're buying one of these or if you're uh, upgrading one of these, you know exactly which model it is. And what I wanted to show you back here is this right here has a 500 watt power supply in it. And this one has the 350 watt. So it is the same size and everything. It's just, you just you would have to buy one of these from HP or find one that's compatible with the HP. That's the same size and bolt pattern for here. So if you did want to upgrade your power supply, it's probably not as cheap as just grabbing a power supply, you know, from Amazon or something. But at least you do have an option of finding one that will fit in this case. Now, the difference between your 350 watt and 500 watt, of course, allows you to do something like this, which this is, I believe, a 3060 Ti graphics card in here versus this RX 6400. So more juice in the power supply, more juice for your GPU. So let's go ahead and hook this thing back up and fire it up and make sure it sees that 16 gigs of RAM. All right, so we're back into Windows now. So let's go ahead and open up the task manager here and go over to performance. And we see now we do have 16 gigs of RAM in here. Now it is showing 2400 uh, as the speed. So we probably do have to go into the BIOS and check that out and see if there's something we can enable in there to get this because this was 3200 speed RAM. So let's go ahead and turn this thing off and we're going to reboot it. And while I'm rebooting it, I'm going to be tapping the escape key and that's how we get into the boot menu. So let me go ahead and do that. All right. So now I've uh, went ahead and rebooted. I tapped escape until I got to this screen right here. And this is just the screen that you can do a couple different things. So we're going to go into the BIOS setup. So F10 to do that. And this BIOS setup will give us a bunch of information about the desktop itself, but we're going to go ahead and look for somewhere to get that RAM speed back up. All right, so actually I just took a look at all the options here in the BIOS, and strangely there is no place to set the speed or the profile, like the XMP profile for your RAM. And after a little bit of uh, Google searching, it looks like HP does this on this particular motherboard. It locks the RAM speed to a certain speed depending on the type of RAM that you put in there. 
So they have a short list, and we got just a couple right here of Samsung and Crucial that will actually automatically upgrade to 3200 megahertz. But apparently that's not the case with the RAM that I put in here. So long story short, make sure you look up your model number, look for a list of compatible RAM, and purchase that instead. And I guess that's what you get when you buy a, you know, really budget gaming computer like these that probably come off the shelf at Walmart or Best Buy or something. They make them cheaper by limiting some of the features that you can do to them. So I think that's going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. In my case, I was lucky that this thing that was supposed to have a broken GPU doesn't look like it has a broken GPU after all. It just needed a uh, fresh driver or just a reinstallation of Windows. But hopefully if you were looking on a way to upgrade these things, you saw that you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the SSD pretty easily, you can add a SATA hard drive in there, and if you can find that 500 watt power supply, you can upgrade that, which will give you options to upgrade your GPU. But I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found something helpful out of it. If you did, I appreciate that thumbs up. Check out the rest of the channel. I've got all kinds of geeky stuff on here. You might find something else you want to watch. But I thank you as always for watching. And until next time, peace out and geek out.